Some three months later than originally anticipated, Laminar Research have finally released a version of x featuring their new graphics API, Vulkan. This replaces the now antiquated OpenGL platform. The Vulkan version is available via an opt-in beta release 11.50 Bravo 1. Today we're going to be doing comparative performance tests between the OpenGL and the Vulkan version and see what improvements we get. For our test today we'll be using an i7-8700K processor running at standard clock speed as well as an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. With 11GB of VRAM we'll also be discussing performance expectations for those cards with less VRAM. We'll be assessing performance at higher altitudes with the Zeebo 737 and at lower altitudes with the default Cessna. We'll also be looking at what sort of performance we're going to get on our monitors as well as in VR using the HP Reverb Pro. All of our tests are going to be in one of the more challenging scenery areas for X-Plane and that is Orbix's True Earth Great Britain South. And we're going to restrict ourselves to central London. For a wide variety of flight simulation, news and information, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. And today we're going to be looking at X-Plane and the new beta release 11.50, the first to feature their new graphics API, Vulkan. If you're not sure what Vulkan is or what it does, check out one of my previous videos, link in the notes below, or alternatively, check out the link above. Simply put, Vulkan allows your system to communicate more efficiently and effectively with your GPU, with the resultant benefit overall for your system. We should expect faster performance, but not necessarily better utilization of CPU cores as it is a graphics API. The fundamental difference between OpenGL and Vulkan is the way that it manages its memory and textures. For example, OpenGL will not be able to predict what texture is going to be needed next. So when the call is made, it will have to go and find that texture and load it into memory. If necessary, it would then take a texture no longer used and unload that and put that back into system memory. The clock cycles used to achieve that is what would cause the pauses and stutters in your flight simulation. Vulkan, on the other hand, it deals with it in a different manner. It can predict to some degree what textures and will therefore preload those textures ready for use. In addition, if it needs more space, it will lower the resolution of some of the textures already in memory, making up more room. So it would appear there is a trade-off to some degree. Vulkan should give you a much faster performance and better frames per second but at the expense, potentially, of some texture resolution. Therefore, the amount of memory on your graphics card becomes more important. For Vulkan, less than 4 gigs is not recommended, 4 to 6 is okay, 6 to 8 is good, and more than 8, well, that's even better. The performance improvements reported on this early release show AMD cards showing a massive improvement from between 70 and 100% in frames. For NVIDIA cards, the improvement is less because their graphics driver was already better than the AMD's and that improvement's varying between 10 and 30%. Version 11.5 is not on open release as it is a beta. To get it in your x installer, click Check for new betas as well as updates and then click continue. If you kept x up to date, it's not a massive download, something in the region of about 185 megabytes. Before taking the plunge, I would strongly recommend reading the release notes so that you're aware of any restrictions, limitations and known bugs in the system. Links in the notes below. I would also recommend that you make a backup copy of your x installation on your system or alternatively install a second copy of x on your system. This will provide a little bit of future proofing. 
This is a beta after all and inevitably there'll be unforeseen problems. Once installed, Explain will by default use the OpenGL drivers unless you click Use Vulkan Driver for faster rendering. Laminar Research have been fairly quick to respond to bugs and issues reported in Beta 1 and they've released a subsequent Beta 2 and yesterday Beta 3. They're releasing them faster than I can complete this video. However, I've done a stress test flight in London along the Thames with Beta 3 at the end of this video and it's in VR. Well now it's time to get on with the test so let's get started. Our first test is the difficult approach to London City runway 09 in the default Cessna. These are my X-Plane settings and this test was done in the previous version of X-Plane 11.41. I'm using Active Sky XP for the weather, 5th of April live weather for all the tests and I'm also using MSI's afterburner to record the frame rates. I'm using a combination of both internal and external views to average out the frame rate. The experience is smooth and the detail on the scenery easily visible. I could easily have pushed the settings up a little higher but I wanted to get settings used for these tests that perhaps would be fairly general and common in the flight sim community. This is a non-VR flight and we'll be doing VR tests later on. Let's switch now to the exactly the same flight and same weather conditions but using the Vulcan version 11.50. The texture quality slider has changed slightly so it's pushed up to maximum so we get a like for like comparison. And here we go again on the 09 approach to London City. Unfortunately, MSI Afterburner would not record the frame rates using Vulkan. And although I've got the X-Plane frame rates shown there, I'm using a third-party application to record the frame rates. Both in and out of the cockpit, it's super, super smooth. Really good. I'm not so much hung up on the frame rates as just how smooth it feels. And there is a perception here that this is definitely smoother than the previous flight. Let's have a quick look at the results from that test. So OpenGL cockpit 55 and external 59. Vulcan was certainly faster at 65 and 66. On to our next test. We're back with version 11.41 and a more complex aircraft, the Zebo 737. Same settings as before for X-Plane. We're between 10 and 12,000 feet and we're flying over the centre of London and over London City Airport. Once again I'm using MSI Afterburner to record the frame rates in OpenGL. We'll be at various altitudes between 10 and 18,000 feet. Once again it's fairly smooth, the frame rate certainly picking up on external views and slowing down on the internal views. A lower frame rate now, which is what I would expect. Nonetheless, it remains perfectly flyable. Just coming overhead, London City Airport, and then heading down the Thames towards the estuary. Texture resolution is fairly crisp, and visibility is at about 20 miles. Let's now do the same thing we did with the Cessna. We'll now switch to version 11.5 Vulcan and do the same flight again. Settings are as per the previous Vulcan flight. And as mentioned previously, I'm using a third-party application to record the frame rates because MSI Afterburner will not work with Vulcan. Looking down, the textures remain clear and fairly crisp and I can't see any downgrading of the resolution. Perhaps that's because my graphics card has 11 gigabytes of memory, being a 2080 Ti, and if you have less memory, the chances are you'll get more resolution reduction depending on the complexity of the scenery in the area that you're flying. From some reports I've seen, 8GB cards are giving a similar result. 
Let's take a quick snapshot at the results and we can see once again Vulcan is giving better FPS, although both experiences were fairly smooth to be fair. That concludes our standard tests and now on to VR. This test in 11.41 and is the same as test number one. Runway 09 approach into London City. The settings chosen are the standard settings I normally use for VR flying. To record the frame rates for all VR flights, I'm using FPS VR, a Steam application. Very inexpensive, it's just a couple of pounds, and it provides a wide variety of information. The yellowy orange bar on the FPS VR indicates the frame rate, and any yellow lines indicate that a frame has been dropped. If the bar was green, it would be excellent. Orange is caution and red means that it's below recommended levels. Nonetheless, the flight has been relatively smooth with only one or two tiny micro pauses. If you can VR here, you can VR just about anywhere. Well, you know the drill by now, so on to our next test, which is exactly the same flight, but this time using 11.5 in Vulcan, and these are my VR settings. London City, here we come again. Looking again at FPS VR, you'll see the FPS counter there sitting at around about 45. By way of explanation, that 45 is the number of frames per lens. The reverb has two lens, therefore I'm getting 90 frames per second, which is the perfectly recommended number of frames required for VR. In the orange section you'll also see there's almost no red lines which we saw previously. It's not dropping any frames. 45 FPS is maximum which indicates we can turn up our settings if we want to for future flights. This flight was noticeably smoother than the previous OpenGL flight. Got to say I'm impressed. Let's have a quick look at the results. So OpenGL 77 on average and Vulcan a maximum at 90 FPS. Quite a substantial jump in Vulcan for VR. Back to OpenGL and the 737 Zebo, and let's give that a try. My settings have remained unchanged. And for this flight we're going to be flying past Heathrow, circling round and flying over London City Airport. Despite the bar turning solid red, it is not very jerky at all, it's fairly smooth. This is quite flyable, but there are a number of micro stutters visible. But in terms of overall smoothness, I'd be happy to fly at this frame rate. Based on my experiences so far, well... I would say that if you've got a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti, it should be more than adequate to give you an improved performance. An RTX 2070, 2070 Super or 2080 Super would give you even better performance. Now flying over London City, fairly smooth but the odd micro pause. And on to our last test, the same flight again, but this time in 11.5 using the Vulcan API. Settings are the same, as close as possible to the OpenGL settings. FPS VR is showing some red, but at least there's some orange there, so it's certainly an improvement. See a little spike there? Now we're stressing it, but there's no micro pauses. Perhaps a little stutter here and there if I move my head quickly, but that's not uncommon in X-Plane in VR. That's Heathrow down below us. There have been one or two micro stutters, definitely, but overall I would say it's smoother than the OpenGL. Once again, the textures appear to be crisp and I don't see any evidence of it rescaling the resolution. But I'm not sure, perhaps I'm just too high to see that. The spike on the green bar is indicative of a pause or stutter. Let's now take a look at the results for that flight. OpenGL 52 and Vulcan 64. So quite a significant difference. 
But now it's time to review overall what the results have been and do a side-by-side -side comparison in terms of version 11.41 to version 11.5. So here is a summary of the results that we've seen so far. Although it's not always the case, in this instance the results reflect the smoothness difference that I felt whilst flying. The orange bar is Vulcan and the blue bar is the previous 11.41 OpenGL version. So Vulcan gave better results and here they're expressed as percentage improvement over the OpenGL version. Significant to note that VR is showing the best performance gains. Following these tests, I've upgraded to the latest version at the moment, 11.50 Beta 3. In addition, based on the last results, I've upped the performance slightly, number of world objects up to maximum, and anti-aliasing has gone up a notch. Reflections have also been turned on to the midway point. Well, I've just taken off from runway 27 from London City Airport and now just flying over the dome. And I'm just going to do a short flight and more or less follow the Thames down and just see what sort of performance we get. I must say it's fairly smooth. There are a number of micro pauses, particularly at this altitude. If I went a bit higher, I think it would probably even out. But the scenery is very dense here and the detail is fairly substantial so the graphics card and Vulcan working very hard at the moment. Still fairly smooth but there are a number of pauses and hopefully laminar research will be able to improve the Vulcan implementation and help eliminate that. Well it's great to see Vulcan being incorporated as an integral part of X-Plane going forward. We've already seen improvements in performance and further improvements can be anticipated in the future. Laminar research seemed to be responding fairly quickly to issues raised. They're already on Beta 3 and have announced Beta 4 is expected next week. Beta 2 was mainly a bug fix and Beta 3 was focused mainly on the Linux version of X-Plane. X-Plane, of course, is not the first flight simulator to use Vulkan. Aerofly FS2 is built with Vulkan from the ground up, and I'm aware of development plans for DCS. The flight sim world is certainly heating up with prepared version 5 due out imminently, and of course Microsoft Flight Simulator looming on the horizon, something just about everybody's looking forward to. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it useful and informative. Take care of yourselves and those around you. I hope to see you again soon and bye for now. For a wide variety of flight simulation news and information, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications.